Okay, so we've started spelling out a little bit more of our middle ground. Our foreground down here is still underdeveloped, but basically it leads us into this space. Our background, we've put down just a singular direction with our graphite stick. This could be spelt out a little bit more and pushed back with that singular direction. In this case, vertical. And any detail out there might be very lightly placed on. So that the two tones there are enough to spell out contrast in the background. Whereas when we have contrast here, we've got strong contrast. Our, our darks are very dark. And the darker we make them, the stronger the contrast, the closer that form. So we don't want anything that's uh, in the background to come forward and we don't want any of these foreground items to not be in their proper place. We can start to elaborate upon the tree. I'm aiming to make this area the strongest subject. So we're looking to try and get in here with our, our pencil and make some claims for detail. That means closing into the drawing, getting drawn in, trying to understand or really actually look at your subject closely and understand what it is you're seeing and hopefully the tone we've placed down makes these details sit into that tone and inside that distance. Your little finger or its fingernail, you can rest that out on your paper in order to be able to place, especially when you're outside like this. If you're in a studio, sometimes you can have a big stick or a you know, form like this and draw like so. I think just your finger on there occasionally to get in some, some detail is fine. We're trying not to smudge our drawing by having our arm on top of the drawing. Our clouds, they may have gone down a little bit broadly like that, very soft. Maybe they get a little bit of this shaping. Maybe we've got our kneadable eraser and we've formed it to be able to erase into our tone we've placed up there in order to try and capture some of that irregular cloud shape. So to encourage highlights, we're pushing on and taking off our graphite. It retains the detail, but it changes the tone of that detail. So if your initial broad shading was too strong, in fact, it's a good plan because it gives you something to erase into as a subtractive method. Any of these details up here, if we work in trying to encourage um, strength, etc., and they get too strong, then we can put a wash across that and knock it back. As soon as I start to think about another direction and placing on other directions of shading, then my tree becomes more complicated and the ideas of the tree start becoming more about its, its direction and obviously its strength as a volume and that starts to make it our subject. And it's necessary to slow the viewer's eyes down, speed them up with bigger areas maybe. You know, we'll be possibly looking here at us making some claim for it to be closer towards us. We'll have some marks that might be something like this that are just darker, that make you think this is foreground. The point being is that we want some degree of lead up to our subject. We've got our horizon, what's that, about a third the way down from the top. Another version of this could be to have our landscape down here and then lots of sky. Um, I like this idea. It's, from my point of view, a nice narrative space. There's lots of story to tell here, lots of space to spell out. Equally too, if we start to really encourage our viewers to look in these foreground bushes, we start getting the idea of distance being spoken about by having, well, as much detail as you can draw in the front here. That gives the idea that uh, things are closer because they're nice and sharp. It allows our eye to wander across the scene. 
it allows us to start thinking about distance. Distance is really important in a drawing and it's important to encourage our eyes to be able to travel through. A little bit like we'd actually walk through ourselves. And these sorts of lines of the lawn or the grass or the way we're hatching give our eyes somewhere to travel. You'll notice that these are all travelling in this direction. In capturing some of this, we want our eyes to feel that space rather than it to be spelt out as a perspective line, perhaps. So an interesting situation where we have a light tree going through a dark area. It's probably better to actually shade the whole area darker where the tree comes out and shore into space. There's some branches going off into space, great. Because it's up in the corner, we're not going to make it too strong. We're just going to give it some idea. But if we get our sharper razor, it means that when we actually come to draw our lightened tree, we can actually erase into that tone. So we're leaving this area up here a little underdone, a little undrawn. Simply put, we don't want our eye taken out the corner by too much detail up there. So the suggestion of it is by far enough. Often our foreground or our groundwork has some light lines. And it's a really interesting point because a light line is just as informative as a black one. The best way to remove the rubble from your eraser is to use a brush. This is a large hake brush with a nice soft bristle. So if I've been erasing with my eraser and so on and cutting some marks, I can then go into this with that and lightly take that off. So it's good to take your time when you're drawing, take your time being here. The scene has a lot of information and it's really exciting to spend the time and do it in a relaxed fashion. So I can see still more detail to do. We can put more detail into the ground so that the ground seems solid and we're putting perhaps a slightly second direction so that the slope goes up and then tilts. There's then this direction across the other side. I think that could go a little lighter. I'm just going to push my eraser onto there and lighten that distance. So we're adjusting some of these values, some of the strength. You'll notice I'm pushing some areas back and drawing some areas forward. So there's a real and conscious attempt to try and make the short strokes, representing these nice fine and spiky trees and their different directions. So the general feeling is there. So here there's a tree with lots of very fine vertical spiky leaves. I've given it a long mark. And then when inside that there are some smaller versions, but all this kind of vertical telling. This is about trying to understand how the different graduations of tone, they're dark underneath, it's light on top, almost like a ball. So some of it is pure description and other things are trying to give the idea of something. So over here we've got the idea of something so that our eye doesn't go out the edge with too much detail. The same as up here where we're just sort of playing down the extremities putting our energies into a certain area, you know, trying to make your viewer dwell and search and look, but stay here rather than go out. So I'm using a very fine, sharp pencil and getting in here and starting to give some direction to those smaller areas and trying to describe some of those sharp pine needles, the different textures in this tree and give more understanding to what I'm seeing. We started today by establishing our subject. We were looking at a frame, I was putting my hands up like this and trying to work out what would fit into the drawing. Secondly, we looked at the perspective and the space. The distance is spelt out by these lines converging almost. So at here they're a little bit more steep and they're just building up to the flat. Our eye line quite flat is back here. Then we've got these lines that then go in the opposite direction. So there's a zig and then a zag. 
that just built-in space means that we can walk through our drawing. And thirdly, then we actually worked into those blocks with the different marks, trying to get some of those or describe those details of trees and different types of foliage. So get outside. You don't need an easel. You just need to prop your board up against your bag or a tree, get a nice subject in front of you and have a go.